So now in the last video, I put together these two jumpers there so I could connect the batteries in parallel, as you see there. Now my main goal is to connect these uh, two T-tap splice wire connectors to these wires. This is the uh, kit that I'm using there. I'm using 16 gauge wire right there. So I'm gonna use the uh, blue ones right there. And they actually give you pretty good instructions right on the container. So now I uh, disconnected the uh, cable there. Gonna set it where we will pinch it between the little jaws there and uh, close that with just my finger at first. I think that's a little too much off to the side. There we go. And now I'll try uh, squeezing that. There we go, let's go down to, there's a little lip down there. So I heard a snap, but that did not connect. And uh, so I don't have that other wrench. I think, uh, nope, didn't quite get it. Let's try pushing down. See if that snaps it into place. All right, it is snapped into place. So now actually it wasn't closed all the way, so I came on the other side there and just uh, squeezed it down. And that looks like uh, a much uh, better connection right there. So let's uh, kind of keep that, uh, we want that direction there so that we can line up this one a little bit uh, easier. And I'm gonna slide it back, undo uh, this one. There we go. And we'll grab this one. Doing the uh, same process there. So off to the side a bit, that should be good. I'm gonna close it uh, by hand, right there. And again, this is 16 gauge wire, even though it's red right there. First, let's get that uh, one side. So there's a, a bigger lip there, there you can see it. And I'm gonna squeeze it down that way until we uh, get a connection. There you go. So that did clip it. And now, if I come this way, we should get a tight clamp. So doing both sides right there. And I think we got her pretty good there. Now I'm gonna reattach the battery. So I got the, the batteries together, make them parallel. Uh, pretty straightforward. And to uh, help prevent uh, short circuiting, I put the caps that uh, normally go on the battery terminals onto, uh, these are called piggyback spade connectors, and I stick them on the uh, piggyback right there. And I uh, slid in a couple of temporary spade connectors right there so we can make contact and uh, measure to make sure that we are getting the full voltage uh, coming out. And uh, there you can see 13.28 volts. Both batteries are the same voltage, they are in parallel. There's no way they could have a different voltage. And uh, there you can see 13.28 coming to that spade connector and 13.28 uh, coming to that spade connector. So what I'm thinking is that I could plug these batteries into this uh, little solar generator right there. I'll probably need about that much wire. I have this uh, wire cutter stripper. I locked it into place. This is the lock right there to lock it. You just slide that back. Somebody got mad at me for not showing that one time. And uh, we have a little blade down there and it cuts it. And then we can strip the ends there. And I don't need any more, almost ever, than the uh, shortest setting right there. So it's still a little bent, but it should be all right. I got it uh, stuck to the tongue and it uh, strips the insulation off that easily. And now we're going to crimp this onto the end of the uh, red wire. So I like to, uh, you're not really twisting them up, but you give them a slight twist, they stick together a little bit better. And uh, we have this crimping tool right there, so it's called uh, ratcheting. Um, that doesn't mean you keep squeezing it over and over, um, just means it clicks into place as it closes. I know a lot of people don't like when that is called ratcheting. You can see we got uh, blue in the middle right there and we got uh, the two dots with most of these connectors. You wanna see a couple dots when you're done. And um, so now we got the uh, connector. We're gonna put it in upside down right there. 
Remember the blue one was the uh, middle one and uh, we're gonna close it down. So it doesn't really matter where, which uh, way the wires uh, go in here. It has a little curve, but it doesn't really matter too much. And uh, so I want to, uh, I believe that's twisting it the same way I twisted before. And I'm gonna insert it all the way in. So pretty sure it's all the way in. And uh, squeeze her down, release her and uh, should have a good grip on the wire. I'm pulling on that uh, fairly hard right there. This particular one I don't think will have the uh, two dimples. Oh, it does. Okay, um, you may not be able to see it, but it actually has the two dimples, which is a sign that you have a good connection. And now we're gonna show it again. So we have it uh, upside down there. The reason why is because I actually had uh, too much wire uh, going through so now I have this pushed until we are to the uh, insulation and um, you should be able to see that uh, there's wire uh, sticking out so I'm gonna slide it back and um, yeah I can see it I don't think you can um, but uh, any case now I have it back it's back there um, the red one the wire like went up like that far I don't think you can see it there you can you can see it moving and uh, so right there is about a little more is coming out and we're going to squeeze it and by the way if uh, it doesn't automatically release it should you uh, got to move that little lever and then it will uh, release um, but uh, it was releasing I just held it and uh, so we slid that back let's see it is still uh, plugged in pretty good and um, yeah I see the two dimples so now I already uh, slid the uh, red wire on there. These ends have not been stripped yet, so we don't have much chance we could short circuit something. But uh, there you can see the strands of wires are sticking out there, and I got the strand of wires. I think they're uh, right back there, so they won't be sticking out for that one. So now the insulation is uh, really close right there to the uh, spade. So I'm going to uh, kind of push it up right there. And now you can see we got more space. And I think this will slide in uh, pretty good. So um, we got uh, the top up on top. And uh, there's a little slot in there. Right there. You can see it. So just line that up with the uh, spade, hopefully. And there we go. I got her. Okay, you can see pretty good. And slide her all the way on. And we are plugged in. So now I unplugged them. You gotta pull uh, pretty hard to unplug them, but uh, they came unplugged at some point. And uh, there we go. Gonna strip the end of the wires again now that uh, they aren't connected to anything. So now we're gonna crimp a fair rule to it. Um, this is before it is crimped right there. 16 American wire gauge is the black ones. You can see how many you get uh, with this particular kit. I plan to put links for everything down at the bottom too that I'm using in this video most everything and uh, so there we go we got two of them and uh, this is a real easy uh, crimping so again we're just twisting the wire just uh, not twisting it up really just giving it a little bit of a spin so they stick together a little more push that all the way and with the tongue the shortest distance it's not sticking out at all that was the uh, tongue of the uh, wire uh, stripper I meant and uh, there we go. We just uh, put it in. Make sure it only closes on the metal, not on the plastic right there. Um, just squeeze her down. And there we got a crimp. Uh, really solid. And uh, that was quick enough. I'll just uh, quick do the second one there. Twist her up. And then uh, just slide it on, twisting it a little bit in the same direction. There we go. We lost some of the wire. There we go. We got her all in now. And uh, again, I think it's that way, I don't know, you could probably do either way, but uh, we got her on. And now we have the uh, barrel plug that will fit in the solar generator. So we want the uh, positive there uh, closer to us because that was the way it was um, when we had the uh, battery. And I don't have the uh, Phillips head on there, standard works. Um, but there you can see we do have a little bit of metal exposed. You might want to uh, snip that down to get rid of it but uh, I'm not gonna worry about that uh, right now um, so that's all you gotta do uh, screw her down and then uh, same with the black one and I might turn them after I uh, line everything up because uh, they may or may not go to the battery that way but again all we gotta do is screw it down 
uh, pretty straightforward right there. And I believe these uh, 16 gauge ferrules are uh, probably the largest that will go into these, um, some of these screw down connectors at least. The 16 gauge is the largest. So now I actually did have to uh, unscrew this and turn them a little bit so that uh, when I slide it uh, this way, the dimples on top on both sides. So we got uh, black there. We shouldn't have to worry about uh, short circuit and that uh, these seem to slide on easier than they slide off. So that slid on uh, not too bad. And um, so that one's actually upside down. There we go. And uh, I don't think it really matters which way you put it on there. Again, the insulation comes near the uh, bottom. There we go. I had to push up, but you can uh, put a little screwdriver underneath there and uh, wedge them apart a little bit. And now we're going to do a voltage test. So when I noticed that wire uh, sticking out, I did uh, before I snipped the other end, or I mean uh, stripped the other end there, I was able to uh, touch the metal that was in there and uh, negative supply, and I was able to get the uh, voltage. So in any case, uh, I know that uh, this is connected to that jumper, even though we had that weird wire. So this is a center positive uh, barrel plug right there. And um, probably if you have barrel plug, it's center positive, unless you have guitar pedals. Uh, but in any case, there you can see, we got the 13.28 uh, volts right there at the barrel plug. So now zooming in, you can see we got our input there barrel jack. Um, there's also output barrel jacks. I accidentally plugged uh, power into that. Luckily, it doesn't look like I broke anything. Um, so that was a while ago. Um, but in case, we will uh, zoom back. And so these solar generators, they uh, will limit uh, power when you apply DC. So a larger unit would need larger batteries. Um, this is about uh, as small of a unit as you should probably plug in with uh, uh, batteries like this. Um, but uh, they'll do better in parallel. This should be letting in, so as we saw, they were, uh, what was it, 13.28 uh, uh, volts, so like 13.3 approximately. So you need whatever uh, current is times uh, that. And uh, so we got uh, 30, that's 30.5, not 300, um, 30.5 uh, uh, watts. Uh, I believe this limits current to 2.4 amps uh, automatically so we could measure that uh, later but uh, in any case we have uh, these two they are seven amp hour batteries um, so each one of them can provide like one and a half amp of current uh, no problem and because um, uh, they're splitting up the current so I believe this lets uh, 2.4 maybe 2.5 amps come into it uh, I believe though we need the 13 volts so these will drop below 13 volts and then current's going to get a lot lower when they get to like 12 volts current should stop for this particular unit um, if you do this you got to make sure you know how the uh, unit responds I have one that uh, will uh, let a voltage like this power it down to uh, 10 volts and um, so that's uh, really the minimum like you want to let those uh, discharge there so there's uh, different things. But uh, a lot of times you can power uh, plug batteries directly into the solar generator there. The solar generator is gonna limit current like it is doing right now. I also have, uh, again, these tabs here. I have a charger, 1.5 amp charger, that you plug into an outlet, and then uh, it has alligator clips. So I could clip the alligator clips there, uh, top off the batteries after the solar generator got done charging if I wanted to. 